A common trip up on IFR check rides is how to initiate a missed approach on GPS units like the Garmin 430-530. Here, we're established on the ILS to runway 4 at Easton. We've passed the glide slope intercept past Wegro and are starting down toward the decision altitude of 600 feet. The GPS has the procedure programmed into it, and we can see the individual waypoints along it by hitting the FPL button. RICME is the initial approach fix, indicated by the IA in pink. Then comes WEGRO, the final approach fix, FA. That's followed by RW04, the threshold for runway 4. This is listed as the missed approach point, MA in pink. Note, though, that this is not the actual missed approach point on the ILS. The missed approach point is actually the point along the glide slope where we'll reach the decision altitude of 600 feet. This is well in advance of the runway threshold. This is important. The GPS has no way of deriving an altitude-based point like this on the database. Now, if we see the runway and land, the approach and flight is over. But that's not the end of the procedure on the GPS. It continues through the missed approach with a REIT, the holding fix, indicated as MH, and then a hold. What the GPS will do is assume we've landed once we pass the runway threshold, the waypoint RW04, and suspend the approach. If in fact we don't land and go missed, we'll need to unsuspend the approach to tell the unit that we need to continue the sequence to a REIT. So here's how it works. The GPS shows us correctly as being on the leg between WeGro and runway 4. We arrive at our decision altitude, 600 feet, and begin going missed. This involves a climb to 2,000 feet on runway heading. The GPS doesn't know we've gone missed and thinks we're still on that we row to runway four leg. It'll stay on this leg until we actually pass the runway threshold. 600 feet is a pretty high decision altitude for an ILS, so there's almost a mile between the missed approach point and the runway threshold. Once we do cross the threshold, the approach is suspended, as we see from the enunciation SUSP. Also notice that even though we've now passed runway 4, the GPS still has us on the leg between WeGrow and RW04. We need to unsuspend the approach by hitting the OBS button beneath SUSP. The GPS now activates the leg to the next waypoint, REIT, but there's another rub. We don't go direct to REIT per the missed approach procedure. We stay on runway heading, as we are, until intercepting a radial off the Waterloo VOR, identifier ATR. We have this VOR programmed into the number 2 VOR and the appropriate radial of 283 set on the bottom of the dial. We can also switch the number 1 VOR receiver to track the GPS, now that we don't need the localizer, by pressing the CDI button. What we should do is stay on runway heading until that needle comes in and then turn right to fly inbound along the radial. The GPS can help with this, but it's not obvious. You can see the radial simulated as the pink line on the unit and the needle on the number one VOR, as well as the deviation indicator on the bottom of the GPS, begin to come in as we approach the radial. We'll turn to track that radial inbound using the GPS's guidance and monitoring the VOR on number two as backup. Some 430 units will actually program an intercept leg to show how to get from runway heading to the radial, but we just have to know that that's the next step in the approach either way. The big thing to remember is that whether you're doing an ILS or GPS approach, you'll need to unsuspend the approach after the missed approach point, that is the missed approach point as the GPS interprets it, in order to sequence along the missed approach procedure.